Now we're going to talk about electrical power. When a source of potential, V, is attached to a complete circuit with a resistor R, a current I will flow. This is the formula Ohm's law, V equals IR. Now when a current is flowing through a circuit, energy is used. Here are a couple of different applications of this that you are probably aware of. Um, you got a light bulb, I got a space heater, a laptop, a hair dryer, um, and a phone charger, etc., etc. There are many different electrical devices that we're familiar with. Besides doing useful things with the energy that's being used, like lighting something up or a motor or something, we experience the fact that electrical objects use power, use energy, because they typically get hot. This is something that you have deliberately happen with, for example, a space heater or a hair dryer, but it's not really an intended consequence of using a laptop. Now, if you sit with a laptop on your lap for a while, you will probably notice that it does in fact get warm. That's not something you want the laptop to do. It's because of the fact that there's current flowing through the laptop. Now, the formula that determines how much power is used, that's joules per second in an electric circuit is P equals IV. The power is equal to the current times the potential in the circuit. The units of power, of course, are watts, which are equivalent to joules per second. Current is in amps, which are coulombs per second, and voltage, of course, or potential is in volts, which are joules per coulomb. Now if you look closely you'll see the coulombs per second and joules per coulomb, the coulombs cancel out and you get the units of power. Generally speaking, if there's more current or there's more potential, you will end up getting more power in your circuit. There are a few other formulas that are related to this, just rearrangements of the formulas that we have. We know, for example, that V equals IR, so we can take the P equals IV formula and substitute in IR for V. When we do that, we get a slightly modified version of the formula P equals I squared R. This would be useful if, for example, we had current and resistance and wanted power instead of current and voltage. We can also do another substitution, because I equals V over R, we can instead substitute in V over R for I in the power formula, and then we get P equals V squared over R. This would be useful if we had the voltage and the resistance and wanted the power, but didn't have the current. So altogether there are these three different formulas for power, P equals IV, P equals I squared R, and P equals V squared over R. Now I'd like to look at a particular example. If you're familiar with light bulbs, a 60 watt light bulb is a light bulb that uses 60 watts of power when it's connected to the U.S. power supply. In the U.S., when you plug something into the wall, you get 120 volts out. It varies a little bit, but 110 to 120 volts is what you get coming out of the wall when you plug something into it. So a light bulb is a resistor that gives that uses 60 watts when plugged into that power supply. Here we have a circuit diagram that shows this. Now, the wall power is not actually a battery, but we're going to simplify things and pretend that it is for now. All right, we have a 120 volt power supply, and we have a resistor. And together, when the resistor is connected to this to the 120 volts, it uses 60 watts of power. We want to know what the resistance of this resistor should be, and then how much current is going to flow in this circuit when we do that. So let's start with figuring out the resistance. We have V, I, R, and P. So if we wanted to solve for the resistance, maybe we would take this formula, P equals V squared over R. We can multiply both sides by R. We get P times R equals V squared. And then divide both sides by P. We get R equals V squared over P. Plug into that formula. We have 120 squared divided by 
60 equals 240 ohms, which we could then put up here in our key. Now, if we wanted to calculate the current, we could do this in two different ways. We can do P equals IV. We have 60 watts equals I times 120 volts. We solve for I and we get 0 0.5 amps. Or we could do V equals IR. We have 120 volts equals I times 240 ohms, and we solve for I, and again, we get 0 0.5 amps. Solving it twice with two different formulas is a way to double check that you've done the problem correctly. So if I was designing a light bulb, and I wanted it to be a 60 watt light bulb, then I would create a resistor that had 240 ohms, and it would use that much power, and it would light up the room the way that a 60 watt light bulb would. Now, imagine that we were to go abroad. We went and took our light bulb to Europe. Our light bulb has a resistance of 240 ohms, so we take it to Europe and we plug it into Europe. It's power supply, and Europe, they have different, different plugs, and they have a different amount of voltage that comes out of the wall, and the question is, how much power will it use? If you've ever gone abroad and brought some electronic equipment with you, you may have had this experience, if you have my condolences. All right, so we have a 240 ohm resistor, and we connect it to a 240 volt power supply. And the first thing we're going to try to do is we're going to try to calculate the current that flows through it. So we'll do V equals IR. We have 240 volts equals I times 240 ohms, and so we divide both sides by 240, and we get uh, I equals 1 amp. You'll recall that in the previous problem, where we were connecting it to 120 volts, we only had half of an amp flowing through it. All right, so now we're going to try to calculate the power. We do P equals IV. We have 1 amp, and we have 240 volts. We get 240 watts of power coming out. We can double check that with, for example, P equals V squared over R. We'll do 240 squared divided by 240 is it equal to 240 watts. So in both of those examples, we got those both those calculations, we got 240. So we had 1 amp and we had 240 watts. Now this was supposed to be a 60 watt light bulb. We brought it to Europe and instead of using 60 watts it uses 240 watts. That's four times as much because the voltage is twice as much and the current is twice as much. So we get four times the power. If you were to do this you would plug your light bulb or your hair dryer or whatever it is into the plug in Europe and it would probably immediately burn out.